Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. A special treat. I've got David DeGraw standing by in New York for a special exclusive interview. He is the author of The Economic Elite versus the People of the United States. David, welcome to the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Great to be on here with you. I see a lot of snow blowing behind you. Did you uh, ski over to the studio? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Another <laughs> storm here. All right. Tell us about the economic elite. Who are they? Uh, well, primarily it's the economic top 1% of the country, really half of 1%. When I talk about the economic elite, I'm primarily talking about the business roundtable, which is where all the CEOs of the biggest companies come together, and they dominate the uh, American political process, you know, through campaign finance, through lobbying. You know, you hear about the health care lobby, the financial reform lobby. Well, these people are all coming from the business roundtable, where they're getting their plans to basically eliminate the U.S. middle class, and in the book, I try and bring together all these devastating economic numbers to form evidence and to explain to the American public that we have been attacked, that we are in an economic war right now, and all economic indicators say things are going to get worse, they're not going to get better. We have 30 million unemployed and underemployed. Meanwhile, within the next decade, they're planning on shipping out 25 percent of remaining jobs overseas. So the American middle class has been dominated. The top 1 percent of the population has captured 75 percent of all economic activity in the past five years. They now control 70 percent of financial assets, which is an all-time record, okay? I mean, the devastating numbers across the board. They're consolidating wealth and resources in unprecedented fashion. Now, let's talk about the, um, the, the middle class, basically, as you describe it, is getting completely eviscerated, and the jobs that are remaining are being shipped overseas, and any thought of there being a V-shaped recovery or a W-shaped recovery is ridiculous. Not it's happening. It's not happening. It's, I heard one pundit call it a lowercase Y-shaped recovery, which is that basically we've had the little bounce due to the Keynesian stimulus from Obama, followed by a huge drop down to new all-time lows. Now, um, exactly how unequal is the wealth in the U.S.? Uh, can you break it down a little bit more for us in terms of numbers? Uh, well, let me, let me give you some hard numbers here, okay? 400 of the richest Americans control more wealth and have more net worth than 155 million Americans combined. The United States now has the highest poverty rate in the world. We have over 50 million people living in poverty and this number is growing by the day. I mean, over 5 million families have lost their home. Bankruptcies have had a 32 percent increase. A million and a half people have filed for bankruptcy. The 50 million have no health care. Medical bankruptcies are skyrocketing. They make up 60 percent of the bankruptcies being filed. And of that, six, uh, of the medical bankruptcies, 75 percent of the people who have health care insurance are filing for medical bankruptcy. In the United States, we're paying twice as much as other countries for medical care. The treatment we're getting in return ranks 37th, okay? I mean, this is one aspect of this multifaceted attack. The economic elite have come to the decision that the U.S. middle class is obsolete, okay? The U.S. economy is, is like the Titanic, okay? And we're on the Titanic and all these economic elites are jumping off the, in, into all the life boats on the Titanic and taking off and leaving us on it, okay? All economic indicators say things are not getting better, okay? This is what the American people need to understand. You're not going to get this news on, you know, television news in the United States. They just don't inform you. They, they normalize the unthinkable by giving you random numbers that, you know, people are confused. They don't know what's going on. They're stressed out. Over 60 percent of the United States is living paycheck to paycheck right now. Everyone is in dire straits. I mean, it's time for 99 percent of the population to get together, start organizing, become aware. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do in this book is lay out all the evidence. The evidence is clear on this, okay? They've launched a war on us. They want us out. They don't want an American middle class to deal with anymore. They, want to, they see us as an obstacle to further concentration of wealth and power globally. Now, talk a little bit about the mechanisms for eviscerating the middle class, some of the financial tricks of the trade, so to speak, on Wall Street, and some of the policies that are pursued to basically gut uh, these millions of people of their American dream, as it was once called. 
Well, I mean, if you look at Wall Street, I mean, it's a it's a giant Ponzi scheme, you know. I mean, Alan Greenspan just won the uh, Dynamite Award for being most uh, most responsible for the American economy blowing up. But I mean, in my opinion, it's Hank Paulson, okay? Because Hank Paulson, when he was CEO of uh, Goldman Sachs, he personally went to the SEC, got them to get rid of the net capital rule, which of course uh, gave us all this high risk uh, behavior. Because the net capital rule made it so firms had to uh, have assets to back their risks. With the ca net capital rule out of the way, you got credit default swaps and derivatives, and the whole U.S. economy was turned into this giant Ponzi scheme. Hank Paulson personally made seven hundred million dollars on this Ponzi scheme. They knew it was going to blow up, so they insured it through AIG, which of course all the bailout money went to AIG so they could save Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. So then when the thing blew up, there's Paulson sitting in the Treasury with his you know, confidant, Tim Geithner and Ben Bernanke. He also brought in some private contractors to help him with the bailout, all Goldman Sachs former employees. Uh, you know, I mean, the bailout is trillions of dollars. I mean, in, t in, in total, if you look at the economy, you look at the bailout, the Ponzi schemes, trillions of our dollars have been stolen, trillions of dollars of national wealth. And somehow in the U.S. media, this is not a story. You know, they want to talk about Tiger Woods and cheating on his wife or Sarah Palin writing on her hand. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, coming here to this interview, I wanted to remember to talk about trillions of dollars being stolen, so I wrote a note on my hand. Maybe the U.S. media will pick it up so I don't have to come on international TV all the time. I don't know if you can read that, but my note here says trillions of dollars have been stolen. I mean, people need to understand this. They, I mean, it's all out in the open. It's not like this was done in secrecy. It's all out in the open. We need to start understanding what happened, start holding people accountable. I mean, there used to be a rule of law in this nation. There's no more free market. It's a rigged market. Yeah, well, the Dynamite Award, <clears throat> I looked at that list, and I, I think the winner should have been the Black and Scholes, uh, who came up with the options volatility formula. Uh, this harkens back to the early 1970s. You talk about the business roundtable. Right. It was started in 1972. The U.S. closed the gold window in 1971. Then you had the options volatility formula, thanks to Black and Scholes, beginning of listed options, which was the beginning of the derivatives market, which gave birth to the d she devil and 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 horrendous monsters from the derivatives deep of Hank Paulson, Alan Greenspan, Timothy Geithner, and don't forget we've got now Cantor Fitzgerald down there on Wall Street. They're going to introduce box office futures contracts. This will be the next thing to blow up after the dot com blew up, the real estate blew up, long term capital management blew up, and of course every time it blows up, they keep all the fees as part of their extraction of wealth. And the public keeps all of the losses, which brings me to my next question, this whole idea of redistribution. Because people in America say, well, you can't redistribute wealth, that's socialism. But we're not talking about redistributing wealth, we're talking about redistributing risk. Why are the people who take all these risks not the ones who are the ones who suffer the consequences if the risks go bad? What about redistribution of risk? Is this ever going to happen? It's not going to happen. It's like trickle-down economics. It just doesn't happen. The money don't, never trickles down. Look at bank lending right now. The bailout was supposed to increase bank lending. They're not lending anything. You know, if you, if you look at the concentration of wealth, look at the success of the business roundtable. When they started, CEOs made $25 for every $1 the average worker made. Today, with uh, stock options and incentives, CEOs now make $500 for every $1 the average worker makes. Right, and th th this whole notion of earning of course, in making, it's a misnomer because they're not actually contributing anything to the production and the savings of the country. All they're doing is taking these outrageous bets of which they're taking zero risk. Now, what about the two-party system in America, Democrats and Republicans? Is this just a charade? Ultimately, it is a charade, and it's, it's not some secret conspiracy. It's all out in the open. I mean, just look at campaign finance. Ninety percent of the time, the candidate who simply spends more money wins the election, okay? Ninety percent of our elected officials have the business roundtable to thank because those companies primarily funded their campaigns. So they bend over backwards to do whatever the roundtable wants. I mean, this is all out in the open. This isn't some secret. You know, and, and getting back into the market really quick, I mean, Capital, you know, free market capitalism is done. I mean, it's just finished. This is straight up criminal activity. This is what Americans really need to understand that they're not getting through their television set, okay? Trillions of dollars in stolen money, criminal activity. I mean, this is straight up mafia rule. 